Hello everybody, I am Narash Jasutani and I am a specialist customer engineer working at Google in AI and ML space. I'm gonna be a presenter for this course on Big Data and Machine Learning 101. I'm a published author as well. I have published Adapting TensorFlow for Real World AI, which is available on Google Play Store as well as Amazon Kindle. Let's talk about this course. In this course, you would learn about basics of big data and machine learning. This course is designed to provide you the understanding and the basic concepts of big data and machine learning. Making this course, you are expected to learn about various types of data, data warehouses, big data, machine learning, and NoSQL and RDBMS databases. In the last 10 to 12 years, machine learning has enabled a lot of innovations like self-driving cars, speech recognition systems, web searches, and whatnot. By the end of this course, you would get started with machine learning, understand one simple example of linear regression, and be able to differentiate between data science, machine learning, and other components of AI. So let's get started and let's look at the course content. In the module one, we are going to talk about big data. We will, we will understand what is big data, what is structured, unstructured data set, NoSQL, RDBMS, evolution of data warehousing and big data, characteristics of big data and big data and machine learning use cases. The second module, which is around machine learning, you would understand what is machine learning? What is data science? What are these buzzwords and how they fit together? in an artificial intelligence world. Then you will understand what is machine learning, how to go about machine learning, and how Google Colab and Google other products play a role in machine learning. At the end of this course, you will understand and appreciate the machine learning algorithms. It's nothing but a mathematical equation. And you will be able to write your first machine learning program on Python. We have a quiz for you as well at the end of this course, which will not be difficult. So let's get started. Hello. In this session, we are gonna talk about data. Data is all around us, but what is it? Data is a value assigned to a thing. Data is everywhere. Let's take an example of a Facebook page. In this page, you have Mark Zuckerberg's profile, who is the CEO of Facebook. The data and information, what you can derive out of it is the name, the age, the occupation, and language is spoken. So you see here, the data is available in any form or fashion. So data, what you would have seen earlier, most likely is a collection of rows and columns, data in a tabular format. That is a type of data. So let's look at other types of data as well. The first one is, the structured data. The data is stored in a form of a tabular data set, like rows and columns. This is a data set which you would normally see in your day-to-day -day life when you talk about technical things and what you are learning. You have databases, you have flat files, you have a table like area and price as shown here. Anything which is structured has rows and columns and can be easily absorbed in a relational database and forget about the term relational for now, but absorbed in a database and flat files is tabular data, which is structured data. Now let's look at other forms of data like unstructured data represents data which does not have a recognizable structure. That, that is the data which cannot be laid out in rows and columns format. As we have seen earlier, the example of the Facebook page of the CEO of Facebook. Other example, tweets, images, YouTube videos, or any other videos, emails, all, all this type of data cannot be stored in form of rows and columns. And therefore, unstructured data is a different type of data than structured data. Unstructured data can be pleasing to the human eye, but not to the machines. We'll talk about that in the next few videos to come. In this section, we are going to talk about big data. What is big data? As the name suggests, big data means a lot of data. 
lots of data collected from digital and traditional data sources that can be used for discovery and analytics. Big data, there is no one definition of big data, but there are certain elements that are common in all of the definitions which you would find, which are velocity, volume, variety, and veracity. So, as I mentioned, velocity, volume, variety, and veracity. These four Bs define the big data. Think about your cell phones. In the last decade, an average memory of a cell phone was around four to eight gigabytes. In this decade, the average memory of cell phones are anywhere between 64 gigs to 128 gigs as well. In some cases, 256 gigs. Imagine the sheer volume of data you can store today in your cell phones. In the previous century, it wasn't even possible to store that massive amount of data in computers, in supercomputers on servers. It was very difficult. One research report says that the amount of data generated in the last four years is almost two times of the data generated from the years earlier. So imagine the speed at which the data has been generated today. Data science and ML are relevant today because we have tons of data available. In the past, we did not have algorithms. Now we have a variety of machine learning algorithms. In the past, the software was very expensive. Now it's open source and it's free for anybody to use. In the past, we could not store large amount of data. Now for a fraction of cost, we can have gazillions of data sets for very low cost. So the tools to work with data, the very availability of data and the ability to store and analyze data, it's all cheap and it's all available. And that's where big data comes into the picture. So let's talk about big data a little bit more. In this diagram, we are considering the three dimensions like velocity from batch to near real time to real time. Similarly, data volume, it has gone from megabytes to GBs to terabytes and to petabytes. And the same time, the variety, just databases from simple rows and table forms, it has gone to photos, web, audio, unstructured data from tweets, videos, Facebook posts, Instagrams, and whatnot. So let's look at these four Vs, which we talked about big data and what they mean. The first one is the velocity. It's the speed at which the data is ingested in the big data system. Next is the volume. It's the scale at which the amount of data stored has increased over time. Next is variety. There are different varieties of data sets available today. As discussed in the previous section about structured, unstructured, media files, tweets, and lots of different types of data available today. And all data is important. Every data is important because it can give you some kind of information or the other. And finally, veracity. Maintaining data integrity and accuracy is very important when you talk about big data. You don't want to be double counting. You don't want to have messier data. It's always good to have a clean, well-governed, and readily available data. And therefore, the value which can be expected out of big data is extracting insights from large data sets. And that is the value of big data and the cloud today. Most of the big data platforms from earlier being on-premise have now moved to the cloud. In the next few sections, we are going to see how big data drives machine learning. And then we will also look at your first machine learning algorithm. So exciting times ahead. Keep watching. Thank you. Hello. In this section, we are going to talk about data warehousing. What is data warehousing? It's a concept of putting the data together in such a form that it can be used for business decision making. Data warehousing, as the name suggests, it's a warehouse of data. Collection of all the data possible in an enterprise. That's make an enterprise data warehouse. Let's look at the evolution of data warehouse. In the 90s, what was known as the first generation of enterprise data warehouses, they had increased focus on collection of data 
putting them together in data model make business decisions out of it next in the previous decade which was in the early 2000s and mid 2000s the focus on bi foundations the business intelligence foundation took priority data warehousing forms the foundation of the business intelligence applications in the 2010s the big data took precedence as we discussed in the previous section that big data is a collection of lots of data sets the iot which is internet of things devices your connected your fitbits your maps anything which can stream data in real time led to massive amounts of data generation and the storage the management of data became bigger problems that is where big data came into picture next on the list was the cloud from 2015 onwards there has been an increased focus on the cloud for organizations the question is more how and when to move to the cloud google's bigquery has taken a very different approach for data warehousing on the cloud itself and the next more and more organizations are getting themselves enabled on machine learning and artificial intelligence we have seen the benefits of artificial intelligence and machine learning which can bring that competitive advantage for multiple organizations at the end it's all about putting the data together and then deriving business insights business value that is data science and machine learning for you in the next few section we are going to talk about machine learning and how data drives machine learning by the end of the course you would be able to write a machine learning program by yourself let's look at what is a database a database is a collection of data which can be organized in such a way that it can be easily accessed and managed a database is a technology which can help collect and manage stored data there are various types of databases the relational databases also known as rdbms relational database management system structured data in rows and columns no sql databases a no sql no sql database provides a mechanism for storage and retrieval of data that is modeled in non tabular fashion in the relational databases which is the sql databases data is stored in rows and columns form but in no sql there is no schema it's a collection it's a document let's talk about that what are the most commonly encountered databases they are normally rdbmss relational database management systems they are organized in a relational format which was the first generation of enterprise data warehousing we call that the first generation of data warehousing focused on collection and managing and storage of data that is where the relational database management system came into picture for data modeling purposes engineers used to model the data in a relational database format for mostly analytics and reporting purposes there are also sometimes known as sql databases because they make full use of sql programming language and you would use relational databases when you have any of these four options you have a well structured data model you have a huge amount of data but manageable and you have database administrators in the stack the problem comes where you do not have ability to change the schema you, you will have to define the schema that means the type and the number of columns before you can start inserting data in the relational database format tables when you have enough data to be managed not the iot data which is fast streaming data relational databases are not known to manage the iot data the streaming data the scale data and of course if your data is unstructured relational database is not your database let's talk about nosql nosql database is like google cloud storage database or a mongo db which can help solve your problems with relational databases as i mentioned before the relational databases would need the schemas and the format of the table defined before even you can insert the data nosql databases they do not have that kind of a requirement they are designed to scale 
and gives you an ability to change your database structure whenever you need it. And at the end, the relational databases should have a schema. However, no SQL databases like Cloud Data Store, it's optional whether you have the same kind of data with consistent properties or not. We'll look at an example of a NoSQL database. So this is how you would store data in a NoSQL database. So employee has a new employee. Now employee.set property, first name, last name, and hire date. Now let's assume that you have a different type of an employee, let's say a contractor, and you would not like to capture your hire date there. You can just leave it blank or not have that property at all. And it's very flexible because it's a document-oriented database. That means each entity has a key, like a primary key, which can uniquely identify the columns. Please understand that for a collection, like a document-oriented database, you can have different attributes for different rows. You can have an employee, which is an entity, have an entity like employee, obviously the business data which will be contained around employee can have different columns, different metadata types. And that is the difference between a NoSQL and a SQL database. Now let's look at another component, which is Hadoop. You must have heard this term Hadoop at a lot of times. Apache Hadoop, which is an open source platform, you can go download and start using this software that can facilitate using a network of many computers, a combination of computers to solve a business problem. It provides a software framework which helps for distributed computing and processing of lots of data. And again, lots of data is big data. This is done by something known as MapReduce. For this course, we'll keep MapReduce as out of scope item for us. Let's look at Google Cloud Platform's different type of databases for different types of workloads. You have in-memory, relational, no SQL, object, and a warehousing, which is more analytics type of database workloads. You have Cloud Memory Store, Cloud SQL, Cloud Spanner, Cloud Data Store, Cloud Big Table, Cloud Storage, and BigQuery. I just wanted to put this slide out there for you to understand that one single database solution or a technology may not solve all the problems for you. Take a moment to look at the slide and know more about Google Cloud Platform's data structures and databases. This will help you to understand cloud technologies in a better way. So in the next few sections, we are going to talk about big data and how it fuels, propels machine learning use cases. And then your hands-on machine learning is right around the corner. Keep watching. As discussed at the start of the course, the machine learning and big data have done wonders for innovation. We talk about self-driving cars, personal assistants like Google Assistant, Alexa, or Siri. Those are all inventions driven by big data and machine learning. We have multiple use cases across organizations. But before you begin, let's think on the Google shopping carts. When you access Google Play Store and look at different products, you would see recommendation products. That is nothing but driven by machine learning not even imagine that machine learning is already touching your lives. You talk about Netflix. You would imagine that Netflix knows everything about a user behavior. When, where, and what kind of shows a user would watch is all driven by data and the knowledge. Let's look at some of the use cases for various industry domains like retail, financial services, public relations, governments, energy, and healthcare. Machine learning has touched each and every aspect of any organization. We talk about customer relationship, dynamic pricing, supply chain, fraud detection, and whatnot. So let's get started with machine learning. 